Welcome to Bible Study Online. We bless the holy name of God. The God we are serving is a mighty God and He's going to continue to work His wonders and miracles even in your lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. We are so glad you are able to join with us and we know that this God will do great things in your lives in Jesus' name. My name is Chris, Pastor Chris of Body of Christ Center and I'm here with my wife, Pastor Funke. God bless you. You are blessed and highly favored. This is the day that the Lord has made. Who will rejoice and be glad in it. You are welcome to Bible Study from Body of Christ Christian Center. God bless you. We know that the Lord will continue to bless in Christ and prosper you. Thanks for coming on. Coming on, thanks for having Bible study with us. This is an interactive Bible study. Mm. We bless God for His goodness and message. We thank God for keeping up watch over us up to this moment. And we know they continue to keep watch over us. So you are Amen. welcome in Jesus' name. God bless you. Thanks for finding your time to tune in and join us for our online interactive Bible study. It's packed with everything, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. God bless you to this Bible study online life. Bible study, please get your Bibles and your writing pad ready because we are going to explore the Word of God together and God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Don't forget that we are on two platforms. We are on Facebook. That is our Facebook address. As you can see on the screen, God bless you. Begin to share within your timeline, your Facebook page, and also your, the group you belong to. And God will bless you. Let's invite as many people as possible to this online Bible study. And I know that God will bless, increase, and prosper you in Jesus. We are also on YouTube. That's our YouTube channel, as you can see on the screen. Those who are on YouTube, please kindly begin to connect your subscribers or connect to the groups you are subscribed to and send the link, spread the news, and God will bless, increase, and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. We are welcome in the name of the Lord. God bless you all. Thank you for joining us. Please share the program. Invite someone to this Bible study, and God will bless us all in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. And we don't forget to share. Sharing is the most important thing. In this Bible study, we have praise and worship, we have prayers, we have studying the word, we have question time, we have deliberation, we have discussion, we have iron, I shall find iron. Everything is packed into it. I know God will begin to work his wonders and miracles. So get all your friends that you know, get them on board through the social media links you belong, groups you belong to, link them through that, just send the link, copy and paste, and tell you your last and their last shall never remain the same again. So we are looking forward to you sharing and welcoming somebody on board, and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining us. God bless you. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. And we can see that some of you are both, are both on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you very much. We appreciate you. And God will honor and bless you in the name of Jesus. But don't forget to share, share, share. And God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you. Bless you. Amen. We give you all the praise, glory, honor. Marvelous King, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. We are the Alpha and the Omega, the first, the last, the beginning, the end. And then shall I accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for your love, for your grace, for your mercy. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for giving us the grace to be here again in your presence where there's fullness of joy. Accept our thanks. Thanks in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every sin not forgiven. Jesus name. Amen. Holy Ghost come down into our midst. Amen. The word says where two or three are gathered together in your name. There you would be in their midst. Amen. Come down into our midst Amen. and have your way. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Let your name be honored. Amen. Let your name be praised. Amen. Have your way, O oh Lord. Amen. Mighty Father, have your way. Jehovah Nisi, have your way. Amen. Mighty Lord, have your way. Amen. Do a new one. Touch Amen. us like never before. Amen. We come against every evil work of the enemy in the air, in the sky, in the moon. And so we bind them, we cast them to hell in the name of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We sanctify the guidance. We sanctify our vicinity. We sanctify ourselves with the blood of Jesus. We cover ourselves with the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost, begin to have your way Amen. and let your name be glorified. Amen. Father, we honor and we bless you. Amen. Bless every viewer. Amen. Open our understanding. Amen. Open our heart Amen. so we can understand more of your words. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We bless you. Thank we you give all the praise Amen. in Jesus' precious and wonderful name. We pray. Amen. God bless everyone. You are welcome to this Bible study. The yes. Lord will bless us even like never before. In Jesus' name, we know where our marriages will locate every life and no life will be the same. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. You are welcome. God will bless you. Please share, share, share. As you know, it's a live program. It's interactive. We have question time. We have all that. So let's share together. Let's invite many people together. The more, the merrier. I know the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. So invite all your friends and the glory of God will shine and bless you. And the more you invite, the more blessings you receive. Amen. The more people you invite, amen. the more blessings you receive. Amen. The more you invite, the higher you go. The more you invite, the gloriously, the 
glory, the glorious God, the glorious glory of God will shine even in your Amen. life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let's go before God and begin to exalt His name. Yes. The psalm says, Blessed are thou, my soul, and all that is with me. Bless the name. Blessed are thou, Lord, and my soul. I forget about all His benefits. Yes. Let's begin to magnify God and begin to thank Him because He is God. Let's thank, thank Him in Jesus' name. Thank you. Bless Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. Thank thank you, Lord. Because thank you, Lord. 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 Thank
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. Thank you, King. Thank you, Savior. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. In Jesus' name we pray. Let me see you through your word. Let me see you tonight. As we begin to cry out to God, Father, I pray, oh God, I will see you tonight. I will see you. Let me 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 see you.
the the power in your word. The power in your word. Experience and know it's there, man. Let it be in your word. The power in your word. I see by fire. The power by fire. The power. I receive. 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 Word of God, deliver me tonight. Let's begin to cry out to God. I pray and I declare tonight. Let the word of God deliver me, deliver me, deliver me, deliver me. Deliver me, oh Lord, deliver me. Deliver me, oh Lord. Father, deliver me. Through your word, through your word, deliver me. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My Father, empower me with your word tonight. Let's begin to pray. Father, do your word. Empower me. Empower me. Through your word. Empower me. 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 Empower me.
alive, my destiny be alive. In the name of Jesus, Amen. Your word, Lord, that brings blessings. Your word, you spoke your word. You told Peter, let down the net, and the word you spoke brought fish into that area. I was able to come out your word that we're here today. Bring blessings into my life. Begin to pray. Father, Father, I come before you. Let your word that we're here today bring blessings into my life. Success and breakthrough. Oh Lord, blessings, 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 blessings. My life, my life, my life. In the name of Jesus, bring blessings. Bless him, 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 bless him,
Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the of darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the <coughs> evil day, and having done all to stand. Stand therefore, having gathered your waist with truth, and put on the breastplate of righteousness. And having shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Verse 16, above all, taking the shield of faith, with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. 17, and take the, helmet, the, take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. Amen, amen, amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. The God we are serving is a mighty God. And this God will begin to work as wonders and miracles in every life and destiny. And we know that our life shall never remain the same amen. again. So we've been talking about the whole armor of God. I said, if you have any questions, begin to post in your questions. We we'll do it together as soon as we finish. And I know that we are blessed. You can post in your questions either on Facebook or YouTube. And I and we believe that the Lord will touch us like never before Amen. in the name of the Lord. I want to do a summary of what we've been talking about so far. If you're just tuning in, when you're ready for first time, you're welcome. This is Interactive Bible Study. If you have missed any of our Bible studies, don't worry. You can go on our Facebook page or YouTube. You see it there on that Bible study this year, Bible study 2. And then you can begin to be blessed. We're choosing this topic since the beginning of this year. I know you'll be blessed and God will bless you all Amen. in Jesus' name. Well, verse 10, it says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The Bible is saying, as children of God, we must not be weak Christians. Mm. We must be empowered. It says, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So there is a power that is a mighty in Jesus, in God, that we need to be empowered. That's why every day, every day of our lives, we need to be asking for more of God. And I pray that the more to receive more from above, may we receive it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. And so put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wise of the devil. You know, the only way we can stand against the skins, the wise of the devil is by putting on the whole armor. As you always say, this armor is not something you put on today and take off tomorrow. You put it on 24-7 because the enemy wants to strike any time. That's why you need to be at a lot so that we can stand against the wise of the devil. God will give us that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 12 says, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the of this age, against rituals of wickedness in heavenly places. The Bible is telling us that as children of God, what we are contending with is not physical beings, they are spiritual beings. That's why we cannot fight our battles in a physical way. We have to fight every battle in the spiritual way. And rather, we fight your battles in a spiritual way by praying, by fasting, by standing on the word of God, by living right, and the grace to actually realize that what we are fighting is not what we can see, but on sin forces. May we receive that grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, yeah. so therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all to stand. And what's having done all this that we are in God, we are in Christ, we are empowered, we are keeping our fire burning on the altar, and then we are taking up the whole arm of God and we can withstand when the evil day comes. When the evil day comes, we must be able to withstand. The Bible says that we should not be amongst those who will shrink away and faint away and fall away during the day of trial and tribulation. We will be able to stand and God will give us that grace in Jesus' name. Verse 14 says, Stand therefore, having guided your ways with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, that is, as children of God, we, there is no option to stand. We must stand as true soldiers of Christ, and we must have and we must guard our ways with the truth. The Bible says we will know the truth, and the truth will set that us with that is. It is the word of God, the truth that we know that can actually bring our deliverance. That's why it's important for us to know God's word. And it says, Have we put on the breastplate of righteousness? And we must put on the breastplate of righteousness. That's why it's important for us to know what is the truth. When we know the truth, we walk in the truth. And God will help us in Jesus' name. And verse 15 says, And have you shot your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace? And that every child of God must go out there and win souls and preach the yes. gospel. He told us in Mark chapter 16 that go into the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. So it's a commandment in Matthew and Mark. He told us that, that we should go into the world and preach the gospel to the whole creation. So our mm. assignment is to go out there and win souls. Our assignment is to depopulate the kingdom of the enemy and populate the kingdom Hallelujah. of God. That's our assignment. We have been strategized in wherever we are as ambassadors of Christ. To get people out of the trap of the enemy and transfer them into the light which is the kingdom of God and that's our assignment and Amen. that's what Paul is telling us that look you need to shut your feet with the expression of the gospel of peace as you go out 
preaching the gospel, you shall be blessed and set free in the name of Jesus. Amen. Verse 6 says, above all, having said all these things, mm. he says, taking the shield of faith with which you will be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked one. In other words, as children of God, our faith must be alive. Mm. We must not be dull in the spirit. Our faith must be alive. It has to be active. So that we're able to come against the fiery darts of the wicked. Yes, because sir. the wicked ones are always firing darts of wickedness. But you see, we have a commerce once our faith is alive. That's why the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Our faith must increase, must not be on the same spot so that we can actually make our stand and be able to quench all the fiery deaths of the enemy. And it says that, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So salvation is very important and the word of God. Mm. No one can go out there without being saved. And no one can go out there without knowing the word of God. Story does not change lives. Test um, evidence I mean, and um, self story that is self testimony and self story does not change life. It's the word of mm. God that changes life. That's why you see we need to know this word and use the word and know the word yes. and apply the word and then take the helmet of salvation and we go out there and we be covered by the blood as we begin to preach the gospel. Amen. And verses. This is praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance. And supplication for the saints that is as children of God, we must be praying always. Praying must be part of our lives. Yes, sir. Praying is not an emotional thing. Oh, today I feel like tomorrow I don't feel like it doesn't mm. work like that. Once you have enlisted in the shoulder, I mean, in the in the army, of, yes, in the kingdom work, you have to be praying with us. But this pray, this men ought to pray and always, faint not. Yes. Men ought to pray always as show as as soldiers of Christ. As one that is enlisted in the army of Jesus, we must be praying always. And this is in in with all prayer and supplication in the spirit. And this we must allow the Holy Ghost to lead us as we are praying. And that's where we stop. We are yes. going on to bring what to this end. Yes. With all perseverance. Amen. 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 So God will bless you all. Amen. Amen. Jesus, thanks for you always being on for Bible study. God will honor you. Now we have question time. If I said before, if you have been reading your Bible and you need some opinion on a verse or a chapter or on a word, you can post it. Or if you are discussing with some friends and something came up, you can also ask for it, ask about it. Or maybe you watch something on TV or radio or media, you know, social media or media media, you know what? You need some mm. let's do that and God will bless you. You can begin to post in your questions and God will bless you. Pick it up either on Facebook or YouTube. We have access, we can see both um, platforms and we can see their com your comments. So God will bless you. So, Post in your questions and God will bless you mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. And I believe that the Lord Himself will work His wonders and miracles, even in every life and destiny in the name of Jesus. Amen. We're going to arise and shine in Jesus. So you can post in your questions and God will bless you in the name of Jesus. So waiting for your questions. God will bless you. Amen. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. God bless you. Please put in your questions and the Lord will bless us all in Jesus' name. And don't forget to share. Sharing is very, very important. Share within your timeline, share on your Facebook page, share on your timeline and your Facebook page, and also the groups you belong to, and God will bless you. And also, those who are on YouTube, begin to also share by sharing to your notifying your subscribers and um, whatever group you are subscribed to. You know what, you can do the same, and God will bless us all just them. Mm -hmm. So, post in your questions, and God will bless us all mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. And I believe that the glory of God will begin to shine in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. So you're waiting for your questions. If you don't have any, let me go on. Or I will have my trio question. I will ask a question, trio question, before we go on. So if you don't have any questions, I can't see any questions coming up. And I believe that the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. So God will bless you all. We need to um, be Bible students and scholars and so that we can grow. That's one of the ways by which we can grow Amen. by being curious. We love people who are curious, who wants to know more, reading their Bible, wants to know more about the Lord. Because Amen. no one knows it all. We iron sharpen iron the Bible oh, says, yes. and we share, we share the word of God amongst ourselves so that we can grow and increase and prosper. And I believe that the Lord will make a way for us mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. The name of God shall be glorified even in our lives and destinies in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You are welcome in the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. If you don't have a question, then maybe I throw in my own question and then we we'll go on to what we have today. 
and I believe that the Lord will bless us in the name Amen. of Jesus. The glory will begin to shine in the name of Jesus Amen. in our lives and destinies in Amen. the name of Jesus. Welcome once again. As I said we are on both Facebook and YouTube. You can see. So please share and God will bless you. Bless everyone mightily and marvelously in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Now I want to ask this my question. My question is that what is the difference? How do you understand these three? These three. Um these three words or this and it's in the Bible. How do we understand these three things I want to mention? Mm. The word, when you hear offering, what comes to your mind? What is offering? What is seed? And what is gifts? Offering, seed, and gifts. Offering, seed, and gifts. It may sound uh, the same, but they have different functions and different meanings. So when you, when you hear the word offering, what comes to your mind? When you hear the word seed, what comes to your mind? When you hear the word gifts, what comes to your mind? Mm. What comes to your mind? And God will bless us in the name of Jesus. We have a question. Maybe we do that as we before we go into it. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes. He says, I was agreeing your preaching on Sunday. You gave the example of Jesus and the woman with the issue of blood. When you said that Jesus knew power had left him, this thought crossed my mind. Can man know if power has left him? No, except the Holy Spirit tells them. There's no way. I mean, Jesus is God. He's the all-knowing God. Mm -hmm. But uh, Jesus, I believe that because Jesus is God, he knew that power had left him. Mm -hmm. But no one except the Holy Ghost. Because, for example, now, the Bible wrote that the shadow of Peter was healing people. I don't believe that Peter realized that power was leaving him, but you will know that the shadow is healing people. The Bible talks about Paul, that the uh, aprons and, and, and handkerchiefs were carried away from Paul, from the body of Paul, and were laid on the sick, and they were healed, and those who were, were possessed were, were delivered and set free. So, uh, as to man, I don't believe a man, except the Holy Ghost, would let the person know except the Holy Ghost will let the person know. Like for example, word of knowledge, that is there's somebody here, God is touching, there's somebody there, there's a spirit there, once you get out, there's somebody there, you are under somewhere, God is bringing you out, things like that. It's almost similar. But to like, but the one that happened when Jesus was alive, except the Holy Ghost is willing to let the individual know. I don't think that someone may know that. And then in addition, I would say that as children of God, most of the time when we are operating under the anointing, of course, this is the anointing of yeah. God that is working. Yes. But after every service or after every crusade, a servant of God is supposed to go back to their closet and say, Father, empower me afresh. Because if so, if, if like if somebody um um if somebody is being used of God, you just say, Oh, it's fine, oh, I'm so powerful. And they never go back to their secret place to refill. To refill. They are likely to become very empty at the end of the day. So that's why as children of God, as we are, like as pastors, or even as servants of God, somebody is somebody's asked to come and lead worship or lead anything, you must always ask, Father, renew me. Father, and um, top me up. Mm. Because every time we are giving out, we must receive a topping up. Mm. That's um, our mission. God will bless us in Jesus' name. Which is true, as Father said just now, that is, if I had left Jesus, that means that there's a major part that left Jesus, it needs to be refilled. Mm. So we all need to be refilled. And that's why we pray every morning and we pray at night and mm. we pray 24-7 so mm. that we will not be empty. You know, it says here that we should um, um, uh, put on the whole armor of God and we will be able to start against the words of the devil. So this is the thing we have to do continuously. It's not a one-off feat or one-off exercise mm. or one-off deed. It's yeah. a continuous thing. Yes. Christianity, praying, fasting, seeking God is a continuous mm. thing. You cannot say that I sought the Lord on Sunday <laughs> so well. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I don't need to seek God anymore. On Thursday, I will start off again. It doesn't work that way. So when it comes to Christianity, it's a continuous process, mm. a continuous thing. The apostles they prayed in Acts chapter 2, two, we saw that they prayed again in 4, they prayed again in 5, and so on, and so forth, and so on, and so on. In 6, they said that, cannot leave the word of God and prayer and the serving table. So, let's assign men. So, prayer is very important in the mm -hmm. sense that we need to do things that will gear us up and will fill us, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And then, well, and something that's just coming to my mind, if you look at the example of Jesus, 
he was always running to the secret place mm. to pray. Even though he's God, he will still go to somewhere to, to pray. pray, to be refilled, to be refreshed. So also as children of God, we must not run on thin oil. Mm. At times, because people are gifted, they are not careful, they will be running on thin oil. Oh, one year ago, God has been using me like this. And they will forget that they need to be renewing their refilled. lives daily. They need to be refilled. So many people are running on thin oil. May we not run on thin oil. It's like when they can't need servicing. Instead of when you open the, is it the engine, the has an... Um, What's it called? This oil. Uh, that has energy oil. If it is new, to be very clear, very nice and thick. But when it has been used and the car needs service, what will happen? That oil will become very thin and become very dirty. So also as a believer that is not going back to, to God and say, Father, refill me. Fresh fire. Because the devil will fight yesterday. It's not the same devil we are fighting today. That's why, just for example, every time he will run to the secret place and say, and say, and, 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 and it was in a place all night praying. So as a student of God, we need to, we need to engage in praying for more of God. Yesterday's anointing, it is not enough for today's anointing. Mm -hmm. But many believers, the anointing they received 50 this years service. ago mm -hmm. is um is what they are still using. Forgetting that if they're not careful, they're already running on thin oil. May we not run on thin oil. May we be empowered afresh again and again. Because we are meant to be going from level to level. We're not supposed to be on the same plateau. It's like um a pool of water. Anything that sits goes bad. If a pool of if there's a pool of water, what will be inside it? All sorts of things, frogs, many things. So also a believer, if your life is not running in the spirit realm, refilling, 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 then how can they be what God has called them to be? May we not be stagnant in the journey of the Christian race in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So God will help us in Jesus' name. Another question says that Jehu asked Jacob, do you think Job? Job, sorry, Job, do you think you can claim rights before God? And the Bible says Job, what I think Jacob, Job was a faithful man. My question is this: Is it really right? Question for is it really right for us to claim right before God? We cannot claim any right before God. The Bible says that all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Yes. So our righteousness is in Christ. So you can now say, as Paul said, my life is hid in Christ. Mm. And the life I live now is not my life. But mm. the life I live is the life in Christ. Mm. So nobody can claim perfection. We are striving and walking towards perfection. You know, Job in those days was talking and talking and talking. Mm. And was trying to say that it's right before God and so on and so forth. And when even God came, before everything turned around, God began to question him and he could not answer and he bowed and said, Lord, I know I am wrong and this and that. So nobody is right before God. Nobody can claim right before God. That's why Christ came because the law, nobody could fulfill the law. Mm. And James says that if you obey the law and fail in one part, you are failed in all mm. part of it. And that was why the Israelites find it difficult to fulfill all the law. Because it's impossible for a man, human being, to fulfill all the law. And the only way we can do that is through the death of Christ. Mm. So when we now give our life to Christ, and we're in Christ, mm -hmm. our righteousness is in Christ. So it's not our own righteousness, but righteousness of Christ that covers us. Covers us. So when God sees us, he doesn't see us, he sees Christ. And then that's how we are righteous before God. But no human being here on earth is righteous before God. Mm. In, addition, in addition, nobody can claim, oh, I am right before mm -hmm. God. The Bible says we are saved by grace, yes, lest any man should boast. Even if you go look at the story of Job very, very well, he had his own mistake. Number one, he was very afraid. The Bible says what he feared most came upon him. Yes, sir. So there are, even the Bible says when the children of men and when, when the children of the Lord were gathered, where was the guy? So that means when we actually look at things very carefully. This man too is as for and do you know no man can claim that oh I'm so right. That's why the Bible says that um do you know the law of Moses? There are over six hundred and something laws to be followed, to be obeyed. And in reality, no man can obey those laws. Like one preacher said, he said God actually brought the children of Israel to the judgment room. That okay, you think you are righteous, you can kill so much cows and so much goats and so much sheep. Let's see how you can, but you see, that says our righteousness are like filthy rags, even though they tried, but they couldn't. So also Job too. So no man can that's why and no man can say, Oh, I'm so righteous. Our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. Bible says. 
He who knew no sin was, was made sin, sin, so that we can become the righteousness of God mm. in Christ Jesus. Because of the blood of the Christ, I mean, because of the blood of the cross, that is why we are righteous today. So that not, nobody can brag. Ah, that's why nobody, nobody is born a righteous person. That is, we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So it's only when we accept Jesus Christ as Savior and say, Father, I am a sinner, forgive me my sins. And the Bible says he will forgive us our sins because our lives, our righteousness is in Christ Jesus. So may God help us. Yes, I hope that answers your question. No one is right. Before. That's why you see we go before God. That's why John says that we confess our sins. It's really unjust to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And it talks again about in chapter 2 of First John that if anyone sins, there's a preparation mm -hmm. for sin that you just go and confess. That's sin deliberately. You go and confess that Lord cleanse me, make me whole pure and sanctified. No one is no one is hundred percent perfect. There's no perfection. Our perfection is in Christ. So we are moving in Christ and may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. So maybe that answers your question. It says in first another question in First Corinthians eleven six and thirteen. First Corinthians eleven six and thirteen it says we see Paul speak on the notion of women wearing head coverings while praying. Uh, his statements concerning this element to, to today's world. I would say, but Paul was speaking to the women Corinthians. of Corinth, the Corinthians, because whether you cover your head while praying. Or you don't cover your head while praying, God will still answer. Mm -hmm. All those things are just outward. There's a word the Bible uses outwards and outward, mm -hmm. outward mm -hmm. adornment. Mm -hmm. Yes. Because whether you whether you cover your head, you don't cover your head. If the heart is very dirty, God will not hear. So I would say that it's like saying, Oh, you know, some people say, Oh, you know, some people say women should not wear earrings. Well, it's a doctrine. It, it's a doctrine. At that point in time, Brother Paul was speaking to the women at Corinth. So may God help us in Jesus' name. And I will say, okay, those kind of things are just, I will say shadow. It is not the real thing. Because if I cover my head, or I don't cover my head, and my heart, God forbid, is very dirty, I'm just wasting my time. Covered head, uncovered head. The most important thing is our right must be, I mean, our, our heart must be with um, with the word, must be in line with the word of God. That's why the Bible says that it will give us the heart of flesh and we will remove the heart of stone. And also in addition to that, the church in Corinth had problems and mm. had issues. And the problems was this cultural clash and all the clash mm. and all the clash. So for peace sake, Paul was saying that okay, you women cover your head mm. when you're talking to God and this and that. And you see, if it had been a law. Mm. If there had been a law or a, a serious doctrine, we would have written the same thing to the Romans, to Ephesians, mm. to the Galatians, mm. we the same thing to to Philippians, you understand, and Colossians, mm. and all of them. We are even writing the same thing to Timothy, that when you come together, mm. and when you're about to read, say, make sure you are reading mm. the, the, the public um, reading of the Bible, mm. and preach, be in and out of sin. And, and you talk, spoke about guarding of men and women. Mm. You would have said, that, make sure that the women are covering their head. Mm. You would have written it there, even to Titus, but mm. it never did. Because it was just an issue that the church in Corinth had, and they had mm. to resolve it. And, and you see, Corinth, they had so, much, so many issues. They had the issues about, um, I belong to Apollo, I belong mm. to Paul. They had the issue of a man sleeping with his father's no, wife. They had, they had issues with um, uh, eating food sacrifices, sacrifice to idol. They had issue of, 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 of not knowing, um, should that marry or no marry? Should that just live together with that marriage in chapter 7 of First Corinthians? So they had different, different issues in the church of Corinth. And that was why, you see, that is what, that's why Paul wrote. And you see, Paul said, after Paul had heard everything, he said, about other matters, I will deal with it when I come. Mm. But I'm reading this briefly to you so you can understand. So there were other matters that the church in Corinth were going through. So this was particularly for the church in Corinth. Corinth. And you see, some people carry it. I don't know which, I've forgotten which, 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 which part. I don't know, I've forgotten which part the Bible says that Paul wrote, that I don't permit women to speak in the church. Now, mm. some men and some churches are taking that. Mm. And you don't permit women to speak in the church. So also this mm. hair covering. Some people are taking it drastically in the church. That if you don't cover your hair, as your head as a woman, you are a sinner. Mm. You understand? But the Bible did not say so. The Bible did not say that. If thou coverest not thy head, 
thou has sinned against God and the wrath of God is upon thy life. There's mm. nowhere in the Bible that the Bible says that. So, you see, these are just advice. And so, in our world of today, is an, is, to me, it's option. Optional to you, you can cover your head, you may not cover, that does not make any difference. That does not, that does not make you to worship God the more or not the more. And the issue about all these writers and pastors have said, all these acts, is and it, they are acts of holiness, but it doesn't make you holy. Mm. Covering your hair, doing, not wearing a ring, not doing all that, to me, it's an act of holiness, but not holiness even itself. Even say the can't even say it's act of holy because the Bible did not say it's act of holy. No, what I'm saying is that when some man uh, made when somebody sees somebody, well, let's be realistic. When you see somebody with scarf, head cover, no earring, nothing whatsoever, no makeup, ah, in your heart, you say this person must be holy, holy person. That's what I mean. This must be a holy person because of the way they compose themselves and their dress, and they may be the worst person on earth. You understand? So, so that is why, and that's why mm. that is not a prerequisite. For you knowing if they are Christians or not, if they are born again or not. The Bible does not say that you shall know them by the dress they are wearing. You shall know them by the by their fruit. By their fruit, you shall know them. So may God help us in the name of Jesus and God amen. uphold us in Jesus' name. Amen. amen, 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 amen in Jesus' name. So I believe that answers all our questions amen. and God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. And I believe that we are all blessed in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Maybe we should defy our for somebody's answer, maybe we should defy our question. For next week, I'm going what we have today. Or let me see what this person is saying. I just read briefly. A seed is sowing or putting down something in order to keep to reap a reward. Offering is given to God something like money to show how much I love God. Gift is blessing, appreciating God with a present, but not expecting to get. No. Everything you must, you <laughs> no. must, you must expect something back. <laughs> you must expect something back. Oh. You must expect something back. In whatever you are giving a gift or a seed or offering, mm -hmm. you must expect something mm -hmm. back because you don't just um, look at what um, Anna did. She gave a gift to God, a vow, and what happened? She received five children back in return. So mm -hmm. when you give a gift to God, of course you will receive in return. So whether it's a gift or offering or seed. One thing about this tree, the common denominator for this tree is that you must always expect a return. Because people just give and they don't they don't expect a return. And that's why they don't get a return. You see, when you give your offering <coughs> or a seed or gift, you must expect a return. I think we'll talk more about this next week. We'll have more time on this. But the denominator in all this, based on what our sister has said, is that whether it's offering or seed or gifts, you must expect a return, a return, a return of whatever. It may not be equivalent to what you have given. It may be more, it may be less, it may be equal, but there's no fast rule as to the, to the, as to the, um, to the um, result. result as well, to the result of what you give, what you get. God is the one that decides that. So I think we'll go on next week on that. Yes. And then I will give, um, Luke 6, verse 38. Luke 6, 38 to show that whether we are sowing the seed, we are giving an offering, we are giving a gift to God. Some people are trying to say, Oh, I'm giving this boss for, um, I'm giving this boss as a gift mm. for the church to be carrying people. Mm -hmm. It can be a gift, it can be throwing this seed. So, whether you call it a seed, a gift, an offering, Luke 6, 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. Mm. Good measure, press down sh and shake it together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom? For with the same man that you met with, that it shall be measured to you again. Mm. And I say, God loves a cheerful giver. So as we are giving, you must always be expectant and we'll get returns in Jesus' name. Amen. But there's a difference in between offering, there's a difference in seed, and a difference in gift. <clears throat> they are all different things and they have different functions. And I believe that we'll discuss that next week by God's grace. I'll keep this paper. We'll discuss that next week. What is offering? So that's the homework we have for you. What is offering? What is seed? What is a gift? They are different entirely. And they have different functions. Because, mm. for example, there's one there that is a commandment of God. There's one there, just one, that's a commandment of God. Mm. And that means that it's a must that you must do that one. You understand? It's compulsory. You must do that one. Why? Some are free will offering and some are what you determine.
to give offering. You understand? So we have offering, we have seed, we have gift. But in all the three, the common denominator, as we said, is that you must you must be expectant. When you ask, where Pastor read, if you read very well, that person gave once. We give once and return and receive seven yeah. in return. Seven in return. Press down, shake it together, praying over. Shall then give unto your bosom. For the measure you give will be the measure you mm. get. You know, so give and shall be given into you. Then give. Mm. That's the first one. So you, anybody that gives or seed or offering should expect sevenfold return Amen. for that one that you have given. So may God help us in the name of Jesus. So I think Amen. we go into what we have today. And God will help us mightily in the name of thanks for the, those mm-hmm. who send in your questions. We appreciate you. God will bless you and honor you in the name of Jesus. Mm-hmm. It is well with your soul. So we are talking about we are talking about the whole armor of God. The whole armor of God. And then we are teaching the book of Ephesians chapter 6. And then we are in verse 18. See, praying always with all prayer. We've done all that prayer and praying always with supplication in the spirit. We've done that. Being watchful, we've done that to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. The question today we want to ask is that who are the saints? Before we even go into perseverance, and prayer, who are the saints mm. that Paul was referring to that we should pray for the saints? Who are the saints? Who when when we say pray for the saints, what comes to your mind? <laughs> is it the saints in one denomination of a church? But they use more of that word than other denomination. Or who are the saints? Who are the saints that when we say saints in our world of the day, who are we referring to? And Paul said, uh, for the saints. So who are these saints? Who are the saints? Because many times you see the word saints in the Bible. Saints in the Bible. Saints in the Bible. So who are the saints? Who are the saints? Say, um, um, with all perseverance and supplications for the for all, not even some. For all the saints. So who are the saints? Who are the saints? Who are the saints? Who are the saints? The saints are uh, the saints can be referred to as every child of God. You know, most of the time people are referring to saints, they are talking about maybe pastors, apostles, teachers, um, um, um which servants of God. Yeah, generally servants of God. But everybody is a saint. Once you are born again. You are giving your life to Jesus. You have been bought with the price. You have been washed with the blood of Jesus. You are a saint. I'm a saint. Yes. Okay. It is well. Mm. So who are the saints? I'm trying to see if the Bible says that everybody who is born again is a saint. So who are the saints, church? Who are the saints? Who are the says servants of God? Who are the saints? Who are the saints? Servants of God. I don't have the Bible. I wanted to open. Is this Second Corinthians chapter? Who are the saints? 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 And Second Corinthians chapter nine, somewhere after verse 10, 11. I think it says that I shall be given unto you. No, it says that whoever so spying will spy in me. There's something I want to read there about the saints. Who are the saints? Who are the saints? Who are the saints? Church. Somebody, what they just answered, say, uh, servants of God. Somebody just says, I agree with you, mom. So, what is your own? What is your own? So, who are the saints? Who are the saints? I don't have. I don't have Bible. I can open Bible. Who are the saints? What's the Bible? That is here, Pastor. Who are the saints? Who are the saints? I want to read. Who are the saints? I want to read 2 Corinthians chapter. We are still waiting with, for you. Who are the saints? Because Paul was saying that we should pray for all the saints. Who are the saints? Hmm. Oh, my God. Nice. And then I would say, believe it, I, it depends on the context that is being used. That is, that's, that's yeah. Right. Because if there are some contests, it would refer to servants of God, and there are some Bible passages refers to everybody. Like a good example, it says, um, First Timothy, so Romans one seven, to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, it says to all those in Rome who are loved by God and called to be saints, 
grace to you and peace from our God, our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ. So in this context, it's referring to everybody. Mm. Every child of God is a saint. But in some context, it will refer to servants of God. God. Mm. 2 Corinthians chapter 9, from verse 12, says, For the administration of this service not only supplies the needs of the saints, but also abounding through many thanksgivings to God. Why the spirit? So it's the saints here were the people who are servants of God that Paul so I believe that Paul was in this reference is referring to like servants of God who are in the work of God that oh, because Paul writing this was also behind bars. When he wrote this, he was behind bars. And if you go further, it says that they should pray for him that um that audience and opportunity were given to him to preach the gospel by which is in uh, ambassador in chain that God should release him. So in this context, the first said, I'll be the sales here are the servants of God who are on the forefront, who are facing this wrath of the enemy. Because when Herod and Co and the first came to arrest, they didn't arrest the the church members, they arrested the apostles and took them away. Each time they come, they are said James behind him, they took Peter. They didn't take a church member. They took the saints, the saints, the servants of God. So I believe that servants of God in this context are the saints that Paul is referring to. That pray for the saints. Pray for the saints. But we can all look at it again in another area, in another angle that we are all saints. We are all saints before the presence of God. Saints are those who are sanctified and made holy through the blood of Christ and are now the children of God by the by the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ to so those who are the saints. So Paul was saying there that we should pray for the saints. So what type of prayer are we supposed to pray for the saints? What type of prayer are we supposed to pray for the saints? We know there are two parts now, mm -hmm. the men of God and also everybody who are saints. But let's um let's hook it to this um or let's let's refer this, let's keep it to to the servants of God, where Paul is referring to here. So, what type of prayers are you supposed to pray for the saints and the men and women of God? Yes, I would say that God should empower the um, servants of God because they are the forefront. They need empowerment. And every, and do you know, funny enough, everyone working in the house of God is a saint. For instance, if somebody is leading praises, they are servant of God. Mm. It's just that we don't call them, those people who call themselves ministers, mistral, psalmists, pastors, um, anyone that is actually standing in the forefront, we have to pray that God should empower them and that the that the anointing of God will be upon the anointing of God over their lives will be fresh. Amen. So what are prayers are we supposed to pray for the saints? What are prayers are you supposed to pray for your pastors? I believe that everyone here has a pastor over their lives. So what type of prayer? Are you supposed to pray for your pastors? Because, you know, Paul, Paul is not saying that pastors cannot pray for themselves. Mm. But also, the church needs to pray for the pastors mm. also. You know, many times you read Paul, that Paul will say, pray for us, pray for us, pray for us. It's not that Paul couldn't pray. Paul could pray. We know that Paul prayed very well. So, what type of prayers are we supposed to pray for our pastors? Let's use it mm. as pastors in our word of the day. What type of prayers? Are we supposed to pray for our pastors? Somebody says prayer of protection. Yes. Very important that the Lord should protect them. Because if somebody comes to the church and they are bound, it's the pastor that God will use to raise that person. And the person that put that person in bondage will now say, who sets this person free? Let me see. And they now see it's a pastor. They want to attack the pastor because the pastor has released that person through the power of the Holy mm. Ghost. So that's why we need to pray for our pastors for protection. Somebody says again, power of empowerment, strength, and fresh oil. Power of empowerment, mm. which is true, that the Lord should empower yes. pastors. You know, even as you're coming to church on Sunday, mm. you're supposed to pray for your pastor, the Lord, empower our pastors, give them the grace to speak a word into my life, give them the grace to speak the word into people in the mm. church, give them the grace to touch souls, deliver and set free. Mm. You're supposed to pray for our pastors. So, prayer of empowerment, Prayer of strength, 
prayer of fresh oil is very, 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 very important. Not prayer mm. of condemnation. Is that a kid that, Lord, I don't understand my pastor anymore. Lord, uh, I don't even know what to do. Lord, touch him or her. Uh, Lord, transfer. Uh, Lord, uh, let him see the truth and all that. That's the type of prayer we're talking about. We're talking about prayer to, that's what I'm asking. What type of prayers do we pray for our pastors? Then as children of God, we need to be praying for the servants of God. It's the men and women that God has said over us that, that God will take them to the next level. Because yes. you don't want the same food every time. Mm. If uh, three years ago they're talking about something, and today they're still saying they, they, the message has not changed. You say, Father, Lord, empower my pastor. Let him or her go to the next level. Yes, sir. Fresh revelation, mm. fresh fire, fresh anointing. Yes, but that is where the blessings of the church members are. Because yes, if the servant of God is not receiving fresh fire, Mm. Nothing much can happen. That's why we must be praying. That's why we must not sit in the seat of the scornful. Some people, instead of praying for their pastor, all they are doing is blaming them, condemning them. No, we should say uh, every day make it your mm. point, make it a point of duty. You pray for your man and your woman of God that God will take them to the next level. So, this prayer of blessings very important. Mm. They need to be blessed so that they can focus on the work that God has called mm. them to do. That is very, very important because if the pastor is afraid that he's, he cannot pay the rent and his house is <laughs> be, going to be pounded, you know, even if he comes to church with faith, his mind mm. will still be divided. Why? Because you're thinking that, I hope when I get home, the house will still be okay. They will not come to board it up or chuck their, their stuff out there. So prayer of blessing is also very, very important. Thomas is again prayers of stability and yeah. uplifting. God needs to make them to be stable and lift them up. These are the prayers you're supposed to pray. You know why we're saying this? Because many a times people tend to forget that number one, their pastors are human beings, they need mm. prayers, and also we need to make them comfortable so they can preach the word with comfort. So may God help us in Jesus' name. It says prayers to give knowledge. Yes, sir. That is fresh knowledge, fresh revelation from mm. above. From the Holy Ghost because it is when they receive fresh knowledge yes, that's when they will be able to give you what is in the mind of God yes, well sir. that's why any church member that is not allowing their pastor to have peace of mind God will ask you one day oh, God, mm. God will surely pay you back because these people are meant to be at peace mm. so that we can so that, so that so that pastors can actually have um a time to actually receive from God yes, but sir. if they have to answer this query from Mr. A so that one from Mr. B, answer that one from Mrs. C, answer that one from Mrs. F. Then by the time you know it, that pastor will be disturbed. Mm. That's why as um, church members, it is not in our duty to be making the work hard for our pastors. Mm. We must make the work easy for them. And God will help us in Jesus' name. Don't rebel against your pastor that because you know you are the signatory to the account. So that the pastor mm. spoke a while, he didn't like. So I will, not, I will make sure he doesn't receive the salary or his salary is delayed. Mm. All sorts of things does not enhance the work of God. Mm. Rather, it hampers and delays the work of God. Mm. And let me tell you something, if the work of God is delayed through you or by you, yeah, God will look for the reason why it's delayed. And what do you think God will do for that person? Let, mm. I rest my case. I don't say, I won't say more than that. But what do you think that God will do for that person? That's why it's very important. Someone says, prayer for fresh fire. Yeah. So we need to pray that the Lord will give our pastors fresh fire. Mm. Very, very important that they can preach afresh do things are fresh. You mm. don't want you don't want you don't want stale food. You know, mm -hmm. for example, now when you cook, you've cooked stew or rice. You put the rice in the fridge. Day one, day two, after day three, you know it begins to. So you don't want to be eating rice that has been in the fridge for a week and then you come again. You know the taste will be different. That's why the, you need to pray for your pastors for fresh fire, fresh mm. oil, and God will help us in Jesus' name. Somebody said prayer of boldness to declare the word of God fearlessly yes, as they should. And that is mm. the this we must not gag the servants of God's mouth. Yes, we sir. mustn't gag their mouth. Mm. Let's put a padlock. Mm. No, this area. You know I'm the one blessing you. Mm. This area. Don't Just even the, talk about uh -huh. it. No. Your pastor, your servant of God must be able to talk freely mm. without you. Even you know people will say, eh. Hey, Pastor, don't talk about this. So, so. I bind the devil in Jesus' name. <laughs> no, it's true. How can somebody say, Chapter, say, No, Pastor, don't preach about this matter. Excuse me. You don't tell your pastor what, what to, to preach, preach and what not to preach. preach. That it has become a spirit of witchcraft. Mm. That is the spirit of control. May God deliver servants of God from spirit of control. And do you know the moment church members begin to control a servant of God, that church will not be spiritual. Mm. Like one pastor said, he said, um, Church. It's not democracy. 
Oh, let's vote. What do you think? It is more than that. It is theocracy. You receive from above. You deliver to the people. So that's why as servants of God, nobody must position themselves in a way that they cannot preach the truth. They are afraid to preach the truth. Oh, if I preach the truth, oh, this person is the one for now and, and putting, uh, um, supporting me. So because of that, I can't know God forbid bad thing. Beloved, we must be able to speak the truth. That's why we must never position ourselves in a way where we cannot speak the truth. We must speak the word of the living God and God will help us in Jesus' name. And as always, it's prayer for peace and for God to grant their heart's desire, which is true. Every man and woman of God has a desire. And that you are praying to God. And you see, the church also must help in praying and aiding them with prayer. Okay, mm -hmm. for example, look at Peter. Peter was in the prison. John uh, James was taken and was beheaded. Mm -hmm. Peter too was in the prison. Now we can see in the prison that... After a while, Peter was sleeping. Mm -hmm. Because how many prayers do you, do you want him to pray? He was sleeping because he was caught. I believe that he was ready to die. So he was sleeping. Mm -hmm. He has taken it because he said, Ah, Jesus has been killed. What will stop him from being killed? Mm -hmm. Not being killed. Christ has said it that the way we die. So maybe that is the moment. And he was sleeping. But what happened? The church was praying for him. It was the prayer of the church that set Peter free. Not his own prayer. An earnest prayer was being said yes. on behalf of Peter by the church. Mm -hmm. And also God granted their request through the prayer of the church, not Peter's prayer requests. Mm -hmm. So that is why you see, we need to pray for peace and pray for God to grant the heart, the heart desire of the pastor so that they can pray. If a pastor knows know that everything regarding his life is supplied, of course, we will put refine and power. Even though that is that shouldn't be the main reason, but I'm giving an example that if a pastor knows that okay, the school fees is taken care of, the house is taken care of, the holiday is taken care of, the car is taken care of, everything like regarding him is taken care of. Of course, you will have time to sit down and study the word of God and give the church the right thing. But if the pastor wanting to form a preaching or do something and a phone comes in, please don't forget. That tomorrow, if you don't pay for your car, it's going to be taken away. He does that. He tries to get. Don't forget that uh, next two, two weeks, the church you, rent. The church rent is there. Boom. And again, and that fool. Don't forget that uh, the, the, the 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 mortgage is due. Of course, his mind will be divided. Why? Because those things. We are human beings. But are human beings. Those things are not yet set to. That's mm. why you see. We need to pray that the Lord should grant the heart desire of the pastor. That's why you see. Don't give your pastor grief. Give your pastor mm -hmm. love. Mm -hmm. And may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And the mom is a prayer for God to uphold them to the last. That That's is it, very important. The Bible says, whoever well, we endure to the end shall be saved. Good. And do you know it is, it is the person who is at the forefront mm. that the enemy will always try to attack. Yes, sir. That's why we should be praying for them that God will uphold them to the end. Like one preacher said, he said, if somebody's pastor, and if somebody's pastor has got a problem, and that church member is all over the place rejoicing. He said, do you know what will happen to you? Mm. He said, because that is your pastor. Mm. That, is one, that, that is one that has laid hands on you. That is the one that God is using for you. So if you are happy that yeah, the pastor is falling, you better stop it. Because at the end of the day, like the pastor said, for the fact that he's your pastor, he has laid hands on you. I mean, laid, laid hands on you. He has prayed for you. He has blessed you. If God has not taken, the same thing can happen to the follower too. Because the Bible says, like a priest, like sheep. That's why if you, even when you see your pastors in trouble, pray for them. Pray the Lord. Because everybody has got a problem one thing or the other. Lord, uphold my pastor. Uphold, Lord, uphold him or her. Lord, don't let him or her fall by the wayside. Because go and check it out. If you see a backsliding pastor, you will be shocked. Most of the people under him too, they will behave like backsliders. May God help us in Jesus' name. That's why we must pray for our pastors. And uh, the somebody else says, prayers, prayers for their family, pray for their family, yeah. it's very important. Because you know, when they try to attack the pastor themselves and they cannot, what do they go? They go to the children. That's why you need to pray for the family of the pastor, mm. and the Lord should uphold the family of the pastor, the wife, if it's the pastor, the husband, if it's the pastor, whoever, and the children also. We need to pray and pray for them that the Lord should protect them. Mm. The Lord should be with them. The Lord should should uphold them with fire and power and make sure that no evil befalls the family. God forbid, if anything happens to any pastor, you know, it affects the church. And that's why you see, we must pray for the family of the pastors and may God help us and uphold us even right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. And someone said, truth. 
true servants of God are not here to please the church, but to please God, which is the truth. Mm -hmm. There is not a church member that will say, oh, preach about this. Don't preach about it. No, 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 no. Every servant of God must be led by Spirit God. Of God. I know many people, when the pastor is preaching, ah, he's preaching about me, she's preaching about me. Like my pastor will say, those, say, look, if I'm preaching and nothing is touching you, I've not preached. The man said, look, I'm not preaching to the pews. I'm preaching to human beings. Mm. So that's why you stop being, uh, being, being babyish. Oh, he's talking about me. Oh, she's preaching about me. Excuse me. Why do we come to church? We come to church so that we can receive what God has in store for. That's why we must be open-minded. Like I said, some people are salmon proof. Mm. You know, uh, uh, waterproof. When it's rainy, people put on raincoat. raincoat. And as the rain is coming, pam, pam, it's bouncing off. May we not become um, salmon, proof. salmon proof. There are those ones, there's nothing anybody is preaching. It's not for me. It's not for them. It's always for their neighbor. May God help us in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. The prayers for divine helpers to make the work of God easy for them. And that, that's really important. But on that, do you know that you as a church member, you are a divine helper for your pastor? Yes. It starts from you. Divine helper starts from you. You are there because apart from God wanting to bless you and make sure that you fulfill your destiny, you are also there as a divine helper for your pastor. Mm. So you are there as a divine helper for your pastor to make the work easy, to, to, to put things in place that are supposed to be in place, to help, to invite members, to evangelize, to speak good about the church, mm. to go on your social media um, um, platform and begin to say good things about your church, about the past. You see, if we go as Christians on our social media platform, whether Facebook or YouTube or Instagram or, or Snapchat, Snapchat or, 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 or Twitter or whatever, and we just say a word there about the church, about the pastor, about what I've experienced, then somebody will see it and come. So we have, so I believe that every member of every church is a divine helper for the man or woman mm -hmm. of God of the set church, of the, of the house. So you are also a divine helper. So not only praying for divine helpers to come, you are a divine, the Lord use me for your glory, for your glory in, in this church because I am here as a divine helper for the pastor and for the church and for your glory. And God will begin to use you if you release yourself. So we are divine helpers. God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Sisters, let's stop being defensive. Hallelujah. That these mm. people should stop being defensive. Some people, when they hear the message of God, they will receive it. And everything they will hear, mm. they will have a reason why that message is not for them. Of they would have, when the preacher says, the Bible says you must not backbite. You must stop smiling people. They say, no, I have a reason for backbiting. Mm. Don't commit adultery. I have a reason for don't committing commit adultery because my wife is not satisfying me. Don't uh, mm. be a thief. I have a reason you for stealing sinning. because I don't have uh, enough. Always, and do you know it is arrogancy. Mm. When people are prideful, they will not actually, they won't accept correction. what, yes, they will not accept correction. They say, no, 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 yeah, no, no, no. I was even say, people even say, oh, she's preaching about me because she knows my story. Oh, he's preaching about me, he knows my story. You know, when I hear such things, it makes me laugh, and I'm thinking, I'm sorry. God's work is too big to be thinking about just one person when I want to preach, mm. and which is the truth. You think I want to preach online and I'll be thinking about just one person? Is he only one person online? No. That's why we have to stop this defensive attitude. Oh, she's talking about me. Anything they do, I have a reason. And that's why people are not changing. If you see a backbiter, every time they will hear anybody preaching about backbiting, they will give a thousand and one reason why they are backbiting. And that's why today they have become chief backbiters. That will not be a portion in Jesus' name. So God will help us in Jesus' name. What I was saying, not sure that you pray for your pastors. Mm. Criticism doesn't go far. It doesn't do anything good. Pray for your pastors. When you pray for your pastors, you know what? God mm. himself will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in your life and destiny. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Jehovah God will begin to do a new work and great things in the name of Jesus. Amen. We know that Jehovah God will turn things around for you. That is why, you know, the Lord himself will work his wonders and miracles even in your lives. And so, pray mm. for your pastors. Make sure... You pray for them to be comfortable, and I believe that the Lord Himself will work His wonders and miracles even in every mm. life and destiny. In the name of Jesus. You are there. Let me repeat this: You are there. You are in your church. You are in that ministry. You are in that church to make the work easy. 
for the man or woman of God over your life. Mm. Don't be like the Israelites. Mm. After Moses, God used Moses to deliver them, bring them out of Egypt, cross the Red Sea, and after they became comfortable, mm. they began to criticize Moses. What are you doing? Why did you bring us here? They began to do, do need you know mm -hmm. we're going to be hungry? Didn't you know we're going to need water? They, when you see the story of the Israelites, I don't want to call them, they were very ungrateful, but they were in the sense that, you see, they did not appreciate God and Moses that God used to bring them. And many people are like that. Remember, they come to the church, they are Mr. and Mrs. Nobody. And the pastor takes time, dresses them up, washes them, gives them ideas, and pumps them up, and they go out there and become something. Mm -hmm. And after they are something, it's now they now turn back and say, who is the pastor, who is the church, who is this? They have a reason, excuse for not coming to church anymore. Why? Because I believe they are, they are comfortable. And that shouldn't be the case or issue. If a church helps you to get to where you're going. Mm -hmm. Now, in return, what do you do? You pray, you support, you do everything to appreciate the things that God mm, has done, done for you through that church. You can see that out of all the Israelites that left Egypt, it was only two people that got there, Caleb and Joshua. Sure. They were the only appreciative ones, apart from the 20, down, 20 downwards. So Caleb and every other person died. Why? Because they did not show the spirit of appreciation. They kept on criticizing, mm. criticizing, and criticizing. So may God help everyone in the name of Jesus. Amen. Somebody said, He who waters shall be watered, yes. which is the truth. The Bible says, um, God cannot be mocked. Whatever a man swears, that's what he will reap. Yes. Many people don't know where God is taking them to. And when they're in the ministry, they'll be waging war against the pastor, they'll that's make it. the work difficult. Uh, and many and many people like that want to become pastors too. And that's why when they go and become pastors, they too, mm. it is the coin they have used to pay somebody. God will use the same coin for them. Because mm. you see, God cannot be mad. But says, there will be seed time and harvest time. Mm. If anybody's in a place and they are making life miserable for the servant of God, their payday is coming. Mm. No, it's true. Payday is coming. That's why we must always make sure that we are doing what is right. Never make people's life miserable. In the name of, oh, I am an elder. I am a deacon. I am a deaconess. I have power. I have power. I will show you that we put you here. But many people, they will think they are fighting for God, but they are already fighting God. May we not fight God in Jesus' name. You know, it's only these churches whereby they have to, pastors have to apply for the work. I know it's, it's very rampant, like in America, whereby pastors have to apply for the job, and this committee will sit down, and, here. and then they, they will employ the pastor mm. as a pastor of the church. You know, like here, many times, apart from denominational churches many times people from church but in america the church is set up already and they employ the pastor and the pastor doesn't dance to their tune they begin and there was a story i read whereby they were not happy with the reformation of the pastor and do you know what the the person who had the key of the church did hmm. took out the lock and put a new lock so by the time the pastor went there for service he could not open the church and the there was committee no, yes of uh, the janitors yes and <laughs> Service could not be held, mm -hmm. and they for sure the pastor, the pastor had to leave. Why? Because they believed that the pastor was not doing the things the way they usually do. And that's what causes problem in churches, whereby this is the way we normally do. For somebody to come and want to change the, their thoughts and their mindset, mm -hmm. they resist it because they don't see changes. Just exactly what happened in the days of the Pharisees and scribes and the apostles. Why were they against them? Because they saw that they were doing things differently from the way they did it. Christ came doing things differently and they wage war. So the problem with people here in church is that when some when people say something different, they are afraid of a change. And instead of embracing the change, they fight the change. And because they have the power of the finance, power of the key, power of influence, power of control, they do all these things and fight against the man or the woman of God. But guess what? That person is not fighting against the man or woman, they are fighting against God. That's what Gamaliel said that, look, Francis, if you're not careful, you'll be found that if you don't leave these people alone, you'll be found to be opposing God. Mm. And whoever opposes God, God, where would their end be? That's why that guy in the Bible advised them that, look, leave, move this, your leave this man alone. Because if you're not careful, you'll be found to be opposing God. And if you're opposing God, there is trouble. 
That's why you see, leave the things and make, you know, why, why do you come to church? To be blessed. Mm. To fulfill your destiny. To know belong, God better. To know God better. And to grow. That's the reason why you come to church. But many people have added their own reason to poke nose into the affairs of the church. Mm. To control the pastor. That is not the reason why you went to church initially. So, may God help us and uphold us in the name of Jesus. Amen. That's why we need to be very, very careful. The Bible read. says in Jeremiah 3.15, Jeremiah 3.15 says, And I will give you shepherds after yes, my sir. own heart. Yes, pastors. So, Bible says pastors. He says, mm. I will give you pastors after my own heart, who will feed you with knowledge and understanding. Mm. But if somebody say, oh yeah, come on now, pastor, begin to fly. And you, you know, as you, were, you know what came to me, I'm thinking, Go and check out those also, who... Analyze that, begin to fly. Can everybody understand Oh, that sorry. Sorry, that's a Nigerian English. That is, pastor, you know what? I will show you that I am higher than you mm. in this place. Let's see how far you can go. At least they will make the work miserable. And do you know one thing I've come to realize? When people are going through trouble of life, mm. they're in the church, you will never see them conspiring against pastor. That is what I'm when saying. they don't have two pennies to rub together, they will not conspire against pastor. When they when there's fire on the mountain in their homes, may it not be a passion. They will not fight the pastor. Amen. When they have no jobs and nothing is working, they will not fight pastor. But the moment they are I'm ready to Moses. That's a good example of Moses. Yeah. But, but the moment they can sit ah. and they have some money in their pocket, they say, Ah, oh, see that man of God. See that man, see how she's working. See how it's working. They will not begin to look for that, reasons. That's when they begin to see things you didn't see before. They all because now they are comfortable. comfortable. That's why. Always be very careful. I have noticed that it is not those who are, it is those who are comfortable that wage is war of in churches. No. Not, uh, I mean, that went war in churches. Not those who are, those who is are still begging God. Is this somebody who is taking time to apply for a job and they don't have a job and they know that if they don't get a job within the next one, one month, they are in trouble, they will lose everything they have. Is it that person that would think, you think will have time? They will not be in committee of conspirators. Of Go and check us, a team of, even though there are some people too, they are in the team of conspirators and their life is upside down. I know that that's said. Yes, that, those ones is another category. Mm -hmm. But on the average, it's all those who maybe when they come into the church, you know, everything was not okay for them. Mm -hmm. And now everything is now, is now okay. So now, okay, things are okay. Okay, let's see how we can trouble this servant of God. <laughs> may we not be in that portion. I mean, may we not be. Because yes, I will give you pastors. Yes, so yes. it is God that gives pastors. Mm -hmm. That's why don't make life miserable for any servant of God. People say, oh, well, we know the beginning now. Oh, even some people when they see their pastor wearing nice shirt and nice shoes, they're angry. Hmm. If if a pastor is pastoring you and all the color, the color of the shirt is torn, is it not a shameful thing? It shows who the number of members that it shows the care of the members of the oh, church yes. the pastor is pastor over. Pastoring over. So that's why it is God that gives pastors. Mm. That's why we should honor, we should, we should give honor to whom honor is due. Mm. Never sit in the midst of conspirators. Yes, Excuse me, oh, conspirators are not going to anywhere. Not Some going people, anywhere. after they have finished service and they are home and they have taken turkey, they will use their pastor as their toothpick. Uh, can you, did you see what that woman did? Mm. Did you see what the man did? Mm. He did, he did ah, ah. And yet, if they have a problem, they will call the pastor and say, Pray for me. God is merciful, hmm. but you see, we need to be careful what we do. As children of God, we are supposed to be praying for our pastors, hmm. make the job easy, make them, you see, let them come to the church and be smiling hmm. because nobody is just, you, I don't know. Anyway, thank God for grace. At times, I pity some pastors, what people go through. People, somebody who have helped you to pray, who have, you know, who have, when you were in trouble, the person standing guard for you, and all of a sudden, that person has become your enemy. Watch it. It's a dangerous thing. May God help us in Jesus. Amen. That's why Paul said that supplications for all the saints. Yes. As I says again, I pray for mm. us. You're supposed to pray for your pastors, not begin to criticize mm. and pinpoint faults. Nobody is perfect. You've said it now before. Nobody is perfect. Nobody knows it all. Nobody has it all. Even you, that you are a critic. You don't know it hmm. all. What you are criticizing people that they are doing is the same thing you are doing. And even if you are there, you will do worse. That is hmm. why you see we must pray for our pastors. Hmm. We must, we must, we must make the work easy for them. Even in counseling, in counseling, make the work easy for your pastor. Okay, when let me give you an, a good example. I'm not making fun of anybody, and I don't have this example uh, in the church or anything. 
just exam that's popping in my head just now. You know why you are young? You've committed abortion. You understand? And now you are married. Mm. And now you have been married for five years, six years, no issue. Ten years, no issue. And now you have been pressing your pastor to pray for me. I wish mean, anything to make the work easy. What do you say, Pastor? When I was young, I did this. I did this. Ask so, for mercy. Ask for mercy. So the man or man will know how to pray. But you are keeping that inwardly and say it doesn't matter. And your pastor is praying and praying and praying morning and day. And because maybe God is not revealing to them the main reason for whatever it is. Because not all pastors can see vision or have revelation. You know. So that's why pastors uh-huh. must be spiritual. That too. is it. So what happened? They pray and pray and pray and pray, and then in the end you see that that pastor is not strong enough. It's not that it's not strong enough because you yourself you are making the work difficult for them. That's why make the work easy for you. Just like a lawyer and a corporate and going to 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 court, and the thief is not telling the the lawyer the truth. The lawyer will only defend the 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 thief. Based on what the, the person defendant. defendant on what they have he had told him. Now, if now the prosecutor brings an evidence that the defendant knew and kept, do you know the lawyer will not be able to defend because he will not have prepared to defend that person in that area? So also, also in the house of God, I believe that if you know your pastor, that's your church, spin up everything so that he or she can know how to pray. Because sometimes it is only mercy. Sometimes it is grace. Sometimes the prayer point is that Lord make a way. You understand? So the pastor may be able to pray the right prayer and you get quick result. Mm. May God help us and uphold us in jail. So those are the ways by which you can make the work easy for your pastor. You know what you are going to. You know what you have done. You know the error you have committed. So may God help us and uphold us in Jesus' name. Amen. So making the work easy. So what do we say? Pray for your pastors. The saints here is the pastors. Pray for your pastors. Mm. And then let's put it that we also pray for the saints. Pray for the members yes. of the church. Don't just pray for yourself. Pray for if you see a sister going through in your own private prayer. Yes. She told you or he told you as a man, what do you do? Lord, go and pray. That my sister, do a new work. That my brother, open door for him. I know I've been giving him money to help, but Lord, I want you to Make him so that he or she or she can have their own job so that they can become a blessing to all. Not that Lord is good as they are begging from me. They are my servant. Lord, let them continue to beg. You know? <laughs> you know? Someone can pay a seven prayer like that. But what do we do? We pray also for church members. Pray for your colleagues. Not make fun of them. And when your colleague comes to you confidentially, yeah, please remember me in prayer. So. That issue is still there. Mm. Remember, it's not in your own case to now go and, and go and tell the whole Ah, I know what has happened though. That sister told me categorically. I know the reason why. That mm. is not your job. That's not what you're supposed to do. Mm. What are you supposed to do? Keep that confidentially and pray in for that person. And the Lord who sees you in secret will reward you. Mm. Like you were talking, do you know as a believer, every time you go to God in prayers, especially in the morning or in the evening, mm. if all your prayers is just based on, on you, you uh, myself, me, myself, I, and, I. Mm. and myself, you are a selfish Christian. Mm. Yes. We must get to a point in this Christian race that you are praying, at least there must be for one others. person mm. you can pray for. Mm. It can be your neighbor, it can be a friend, it could be a sister in the church. At of least course. you must intercede for somebody, mm. not, hey, Father, myself, Hey, hi, me, ah, uh, my life, hey, my... No, you mm. must you must cultivate the habit. That means we must be our brother's keeper. keeper. If all you are praying day and night, it's only, hey, God, oh, only me, only me. You are not, uh, you better go to the next level. Because mm. as you are interceding for others, yes, the sir. God of heaven will look down from his throne. Yes, and we put the extraordinary in, in your life. life. That's why don't be too caught up. Don't be caught up in your issues of life. You know something because they are so caught up in their issues of life. Even if they are doing anything for God, they won't do it again. Mm. Or they will say, look, God, I don't have time now. When you answer my prayers, when I'll you say to me, hey, you know what, I will do work for you. It doesn't work like that. It's like when the pastor is going through an issue mm. and say, oh, because I'm going through an issue, I won't mm. come to church again. Or when I come, I will do one leg in, one leg out. Mm. Or when I, I want to go to give 30 minutes message or 40 minutes or one hour, I will only give 10 minutes. Because you see, I am not in the mood. Excuse uh. me. Being a Christian is not an emotional thing. Mm-hmm. Somebody help me write it down. Being a born again Christian, it is not emotional matter. It is reality. It's either you are serving God or you are not serving God. Many people, when they have, 
even when they are going through issues, the whole world must know. Do you see? The world must collapse. No! Excuse me. We all go through one thing or the other. How do you know you are a strong Christian? How do you know you are steadfast? Even when there's fire on the mountain, you have to say, praise the Lord. You are still serving God fervently. And that's how a believer should be. Not one leggy. Oh, you see, I'm very emotional. I am going through. And because I'm very emotional, you see, I'm not even in the mood. Excuse me. The devil, whether you like it or not, he's always in the mood mm. to afflict anybody. That's why we have to get it right. Mm. Just if you want to serve the Lord, say serve him yes, faithfully. Sir. And the grace will serve him faithfully. May God give it to us in Jesus' name. People are not happy. They say, Lord, deliver me from being born again. It's not an emotional matter. It's true. It's not an emotional matter. It is reality. Mm. So may God help us in Jesus' name. Amen. And may God uphold us in Jesus' mm. name. And may the plan and purpose of God come to pass in every life. Amen. Let me tell you, if, if every Christian in this world mm. are following the word of God, the precepts, mm. they will be less stress in the house of yes. God. They will be less stress in Christendom. And they will be less stress even mm. in, the Christ, in the countries of the world. You know, Christians, mm. that we are the salt of the world, yes. we are the light of the earth. So, if the salt and the light is in the play, the, the, the position they're supposed mm. to be and functioning very well, do you know we affect the whole world? Oh, yes. We make the world sweet yes. by our softness yes. and we give the world light mm. by the light of Christ in us. That's why Jesus said that we are the salt of the world, earth, mm. and the light of the world. So, God will give us that grace Amen. to carry out who we are and what we Amen. are in the world oh. as a salt and as a light, not only in the world, even in the church, not only in the church, in our families, not mm. in our families, within ourselves, mm. God will give us that grace in the name of Jesus. Amen. So it is well with our soul. I think we we'll stop here for prayer for the saints and God will help us in the name of Jesus Amen. and God will uphold us in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's continue in our prayers, yes. not only for ourselves, but for everybody, mm. for the world as a whole, for people to be saved and delivered, for the gospel to go to the whole world, for this COVID to stop, so that we can take the gospel to the very ends of the earth, mm. and God will help us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just one prayer point, that Lord, mm. let me be a useful tool in your hands. Yes, Lord. And let me be a helper in the church you have planted. Amen. Let's begin to pray in the name of Father, Jesus. Father, in the name Father, of Jesus, Father, pray, oh God, let me be a useful tool, tool in your, your hands. Hand. My children, let me be useful. Let us be useful, oh God. Help us to be useful. Every man, every woman, watch. Let us be useful, oh God. We will not fall by the wayside, oh God. Man, talara, kalaba, baba. Hiki, arama, so, toro, boyagara. Hiya, nanamosa. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, Lord, make me to be steadfast. Has been faithful, Lord. Let me be faithful in serving you, oh God. Let's begin to cry out to God. Father, I pray tonight, give me the grace, give us the power, the faithfulness in serving you. I receive special grace tonight, oh God. I want to serve you like never before. Give us that grace, that fire, that power, that anointing to be steadfast, to be unmovable, to be unshakable in the name of Jesus. Master Korea, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Father, we thank you for Hallelujah. Thank you for your word, Lord. Amen. And we declare, Lord, we become mm. good Christians. Amen. Good Lord. Mighty Father, doing your will in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will see your light in us. I know that we are your children. Amen. Mighty Father, we have put us in that the churches we are to be divine helpers. Lord, we declare and decree we will carry out our assignment Amen. effectively, dedicatedly, committedly Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will not be a, a tool in the hands of the Amen. enemy. We will not walk against you or against the church. Amen. Rather, Mother Father, we make your work move forward Amen. and make progress. Give us the consistency Amen. and give us the grace Amen. and let your name be glorified. Amen. Father, we honor and we bless Hallelujah. you. And we pray for all the men and women of God all over the world and Lord, continue to uphold everyone Amen. in Jesus' name. Let your name be glorified. Amen. Those who are in need supply, Amen. those who are looking up to you, Mother Father, make a way for them. Amen. Those who are in one trouble or the other, Mother Father, bring them out. Amen. Those who are financial need supply, their hands Amen. their need. Have your way and Amen. let your name be glorified. Father, we honor and we bless you. Amen. In Jesus' Precious and wonderful name we pray. Amen. Amen. You, know, mm. you know what is dropping in my heart is yes, there's any pastor watching and they say, uh, Five people are conspiring against me or today we come in agreement and we scatter every conspiracy, conspiracy of hell against the church of God, Amen. against the work of God in Jesus' Amen. name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining. Quickly, just a download of all our programs, our online programs, mm. our weekly online programs. Every Sunday we have um corpus forum, 8 mm. p.m. Join us. And Wednesdays like this, we have Bible study, 7 p.m. Join us and God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And please don't forget, I am a cry, oh God, every day, 6 a.m. And every Sunday morning, 6 a.m. in the morning, UK time, 
every Monday 11 p.m. and every Wednesday 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Join us and your life will not be the same. In Jesus' name. And don't forget that 7 o'clock on Tuesdays we have prophet hours. 9 o'clock on Tuesday we have prophetic hour. And then um, um, on Thursdays 9 p.m. we have 5 o'clock prayer conference. Join us and tell your life shall never remain the same again. This God will begin to work his wonders and miracles even in every life and destiny. Amen. Please don't forget our monthly meetings, which is um, the first seven days of the month is when we ask for power. Let's, um, let's come and God will bless us, even like never before, in the name of Jesus. And then the last three days. And then we have a um, night vigil, night vigil by the grace of God. Um, the, this Friday is night vigil, 12 midnight. You know that the theme is empowerment. So join us at 12 midnight for night vigil, and God Himself will work His wonders and miracles, even in your last and destiny in Jesus' name. Amen. Please don't forget on Hear My Cry, oh God, the last three days of the month, we have um, fasting and praying on Hear My Cry, oh God, it's going to be 29th, 30th, and 31st. On Friday, it's going to be early in the morning, which is 6 a.m. On Saturday, 1 o'clock. Then on Sunday, one sorry, on Sunday, six a.m. So we have Friday, six a.m. Saturday, one o'clock, and Sunday, six a.m. And please don't forget, by the grace of God, next month we are having a women's prayer meeting. People have been asking me for that. So the first three Fridays next month we will be having our prayers for women, and it's going to be nine o'clock at night. Yes, the first three Fridays in November. Get ready. It's women's prayer. You've been asking for it. And by the grace of God, be a part of this next month, the first three months. And God will bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. And then the last day of every month, we have Gilda experience. So that's crossover W 1145. Mm. And God will bless you. Because I'm as you to join in the name of Jesus. Amen. And please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. That's it on the screen. Subscribe to it. And please don't forget to press the little notification button so that you will never miss any of our programs ever again. And also for Facebook, please um, like the Facebook page, love the page, share the page, and, and follow the page. And God will continue to bless, increase, and prosper you mm -hmm. mightily and marvelously. Now, if you want to give your life to Christ, very important, just say this in prayer after us. And I believe that the Lord will touch you and transform your God. Salvation mm -hmm. is number one. Yes. And God will bless you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Just said this simple prayer. I said, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I come before, come you. before you. I am a sinner. A sinner. Forgive, me my, Forgive sins. my sins. Wash me with Wash your blood. blood. I accept you. I accept you. As my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name, if you have said that prayer, my you know what? You have just been born again, and your name has just been written in the last book of life. Get yourself a Bible. Get into a living church. And in case you are living in London, we are invited into Body of Christ Ministries where you can be filled with the Word of God and your life will not be the same in Jesus' name. So I invite you to check the address and it is on the screen right now. Friday, 7 p.m. Not this Friday, because this Friday we have night VG online. So Friday, 7 p.m. Friday, 7 p.m. Join us and also um, 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 Sundays at 10 a.m. Join us. I tell you, your life shall never remain the same. And the glory of God will begin to shine Amen. in your life and destiny. And once again, Amen. thanks for watching. Thank thanks you. for joining. We do appreciate you. And that God will continue to bless and increase and prosper you mightily and marvelously in the name of you. are blessed Amen. and highly favored. We appreciate you coming every time to join us from far and near. God will bless you for Amen. sharing, for making comments, for your questions, for being part and parcel of this. God, don't forget our homework. Our homework about offering, seed, and gift. We'll talk more about that next week. But this of God, and God will help us and bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Go before God and ask Him one tangible thing you want Him to do for you. Let's pray in the name uh -huh. of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Father, we exalt your name, Lord, as we have spoken in your ears that ye shall do. Yes. In the name of Jesus, concerning that, those requests, there shall be testimonies, there shall be answers to prayers. In the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you, thank you because it is done. Yes. Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Shall we share the grace of God? After the one three. May, May the, the grace, grace of our Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the love of God, and, and the situation of the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. 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 Thank you for watching. Thank God bless you. Have a nice evening. You are blessed and highly favored. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.